Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for today's special episode of Real Estate Disruptors. Today we have Tang Nguyen and Eric Kane, the Odd Brothers, and they've flown in from Dallas, Fort Worth to share how they're turning dead deals into six figures. If this is your first time tuning in, I am Steve Trang, broker and owner of Stunning Homes Realty, founder of the Offer Fast Homes app, the only MLS for off-market wholesale properties, and I'm on a mission to create 100 millionaires. So if you want to join us on that mission, let's connect on Instagram at steve.trang. If you're excited for today's show, please give me a wave, give me a thumbs up. And as a friendly reminder, I don't charge a dime for this show. I don't make any money doing this. So here's all I ask. This is what it costs for you to listen to this show. I've been advised by a consultant that I need to get the 500 five-star reviews in iTunes to hit some of my crazy goals. So please do me a favor, go into iTunes, subscribe, and give a five-star review. If you can write what you like about the show, that'll be even better. And this is a live show, so please ask your questions for Tang and Eric to answer. You ready? Ready? Yeah. All right. Who am I? Who am I firing at first? Go for it. All right, Eric. All right. <laughs> what got you into real estate? Man, what got? I've wanted to be in real estate for a long time. So it was really um, what finally got me into real estate. I guess was I kind of convinced my wife eventually. So yeah, um, I'd want to do real estate. I used to build houses out of high school. Worked in lumber companies, things like that. So it's always been something I wanted to get into, and just kind of found, you know, found the avenue to take and uh, got some training and jumped right in so you mentioned you had to convince the wife yeah um, so you were working a corporate job you said you were this, the building that was back in high school building houses yeah, yeah. so you're working a corporate job I worked in the oil field for eight and a half years okay. um, and then as a, a supervisor for a heavy equipment company gotcha so and you were making really good money Technically, I think everyone in that industry makes does really well. Yeah, yeah, we were doing pretty well. Yeah, so so then that's is that the reason why it was hard for her to? Um, I think so. I think it was more just um, you know how she was raised and everything like that. You know, just that security, really. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's security for everybody, right? Everybody has a job, and right, it's hard to break away from that to go, you know, jump into real estate where that security is no longer there. But, right. Um, in the beginning, anyway. So. Well, and I've always said, you know, people have a hard time. Because everyone's trained, we raise this way is like security, but it's like it's a false sense of security. Exactly. That's yeah. what a handcuffs are yeah. tough. Yeah. 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 And then you said training is what kind of helped you jump into it. What kind of training did you look? Were you trying to get before you jumped into the industry? Well, I guess it wasn't uh, before I jumped in, but I actually started with a few different trainings. Um, you know, some of the local, you know, come through the the city ones, mm-hmm. um, and then a, a local group as well, and so yeah. kind of bought into some of that training, which it, it was uh, an expense and, you know, maybe I'd do it differently now, but Sounds I don't a little regret like doing cookies. it. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't change anything that I yeah. did because I don't think if I wouldn't have purchased that training, then I wouldn't be where, you know, we wouldn't have met and I wouldn't be where we are today because we actually met at Aria where we had purchased the same training. So Gotcha. All right. And then how did you get involved in real estate? Man, uh, life happens things happen and um, always wanted to do real estate but um, always thought we had to have a lot of money a lot mm-hmm. of uh, capital but um, one of those infomercial my wife saw online and it's like hey you can do it with zero dollars and stuff so I was like a little curious because I had uh, uh, nowhere else to go I I just lost a restaurant sports bar and I was like hey I, I got to take a dive into real estate now so went to the seminar that my wife uh, told me to go to, found out what it really meant, right? Mm-hmm. That was like the pitch, and then you finally realize, oh, you can do it without money or little yeah. to no money, and then uh, just did the the sucker thing and paid for the big old platinum package at the National uh, Education Group, and uh, that that's what made me had to do it, had to succeed. And, and it was like 35K, 50K? $47,500. All right, you remember exact number, oh, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. pay the same one? <laughs> um, same company in the very beginning. I only did, I think I had started with a $15,000 package, and then the oh, next yeah. training that I did uh, was a $50,000 package. So 50. Yeah. 50. Yeah. yeah. So 65. So between the yeah. two of you, you're in for over 100. Oh, yeah. Easy. Easy. Okay. We're, we're easily Easy. over 150 now, just in continued education, I guess you could say. So, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So you guys started around the same time? No, you no. started two years sooner. Yeah, I started in 2016, 2015 was mm-hmm. when um, I, I took those classes, and 2016 is when I really got got it going. So Okay, so you so you took the education. It was expensive, but you got value out of it, and you were able to implement some of the stuff from it. Yes. Okay. We knew that you had to take action, big-time action to uh, to make it, because it's all theory, right? A mm-hmm. whole bunch of education. It's like, okay, great, you can do all this, but just get out there and do it. Do it, market, market, and then um, things started happening. Leads started coming in. 
it, it's, it's real. So uh, let's let's keep going at it. So so let's talk about some of your struggles when you first started. Like what? Well, like you know, you got this course, you got the education, you got the information. Okay, that part. Then the struggle was juggling all the hats, like mm -hmm. wearing all the hats, because yeah. uh, the first year I was in, I did thirty deals, but I didn't have. I gave up everything that you had sacrificed, the family, uh, friends, everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do people do 30, 50, 100 deals when I'm like struggling doing 30 and I'm like all over the place dealing with title, dealing with sellers, mm -hmm. buyers, everything, right? And so that was my main struggle at the beginning. So, so then were you at that time then um, aware of other people in your market doing 100 plus deals? I heard of some, but... Um, I was just too buried into my own. I was like, I'm not worried about them, right? Yeah. I just want to focus on myself and try to get it done. Um, and then that's when we we met, right? And mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm just curious because, like, at that time, you know, a few years ago, like there are people doing hundred deals now, yeah, mm -hmm. right? But at that time, like, it was different. Well, yeah. well I guess like, you're talking about hundred deals a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the other thing too is it's it's you know very interesting to hear, right? Because you're talking about like you're sacrificing everything and I follow you on Instagram and like half your pictures is you and your family yes that was <laughs> so 2016 was the year I sacrificed and I told my wife I gotta I'm gonna go all in on this every Friday Thursday Friday night bandit signs every day Saturday get on the phones all weekend come with me go on an appointment do whatever right and then 2017 was the year that um, I gave back I had to find that balance, so I gave back to my family. That's when I actually met Eric towards the end of 2017, and um, we met at the RIA. Mm -hmm. uh, he took me Which out. RIA? Uh, it was a big dog. A big dog uh, okay. uh, out in Austin, and they were local, so mm -hmm. I joined that group as well. Uh, they were local. I joined for the network. That was the main thing, and um, glad that. I paid for it and, and I met Eric. Um, he took me out on two lunch dates and after two <laughs> lunch dates. Took um, me two dates to get him. Yeah, and got me. <laughs> he proposed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that's when I was learning, hey, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta see if he's, he, he was very interested in, in uh, real estate, but he had a full-time job. I was like, mm -hmm. hey, how about you just take my leads and I'll coach you through these leads and see if you can take them down while I take a vacation uh the second part of 2017 and i did that the whole second uh second part of 2017 i took a vacation every month with the family to give back to what um all the times i had to give yeah, up yeah i gave up gotcha and so i was coaching him when i was in Turks and caicos when i was in new orleans when i was in cali i was like man it's awesome he's taking it down while i'm away and so i'm like okay this guy's it's pretty good yeah. so um coming into 2018 I was like, hey, I think we, we need to, like, uh, put start, some. Yeah, start working together pretty much. So you guys partnered up in 2018. Yeah. Yeah, end of 17, beginning of 18 is when we really, I guess, made it official. Yeah. So. Got married on January 22nd. Gotcha. Yeah. Remember that? And then yeah. now we're work wise. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one of the challenges that we have, you know, we bring it up on the show every time there's a partnership. Yeah. Is, like, how do you guys manage it? Because my official position is partnerships are terrible. Right, but mm -hmm. again, I'm also a hypocrite because I have a business partner. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, how do you guys make a partnership work? Because a lot of people that have partnerships struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that was that was part of the biggest struggle in the beginning was um, not really making it work, just figuring out where our roles were. Um, and so we didn't take off really in the beginning of 2018. Mm -hmm. We we honestly didn't really start doing a lot until coming into the end of 2018. Um, mm -hmm. I think November was when we, our deal flow kind of got into the, you know, 10 or 15 a month and, mm -hmm. and kind of stayed more consistent. But um, that, that was a struggle, really it was. And then I think we figured out that, I mean, Tang's definitely more on the marketing side. Um, we kind of read traction mm -hmm. towards that time as well. And so we, we figured out where to place ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so Tang's more that visionary and I'm more the integrator. So once we kind of figured out those roles and we could kind of step back and say, okay, well, you know, this is a integrator role and this mm -hmm. is a visionary role and we were able to separate that. I think that's what really helped us get going. Gotcha. And I love traction because I'm a, I'm a visionary Yeah. and people around me hated me. And yeah. so <laughs> uh, giving them that buzz, like here's how to deal with people like me. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. And that really helped yeah. communication a lot. Uh -huh. um, but what were some of your early, early struggles 
as a, as a partnership? Man, as a partnership, like before traction. Is before what traction, saying. yeah, because there's traction. some people here, at right? Like there are people that are they don't know what to do. They're yeah. Like, okay, well you'll do. Got it. Right. Let's partner up and we'll do these deals together. Like let's yeah. split the finances. Like they partner for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And so I just want to guys that are listening that have yeah, partnerships. So, so at first you would think a partnership was oh two guys that are doing the same thing that likes to do the same thing or good at at at, at relates or are very a thing, lot of like things, things in common. In common. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I yeah. mean, as you can tell, we're a little we're the different. Odd brothers we're the all brothers for a reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's so. At first, we we got together. We're both hustling, doing deals, right? So that first year, uh, January twenty eighteen, we got how many deals? Like the first month, like uh, I think it was thirteen. Thirteen deals, right? Because mm-hmm. we're out there hustling in the same car, going to appointments, just getting deals. So guess how many deals we got? In February. Not a lot. Yeah. No. Zero. Yeah because we're busy closing all these deals, turning to transaction coordinator, talking to title, finding buyers and sellers. It was just, yeah. So that's what we did. And we're like, okay, this is not working. Right. Right. And so. Um, I think probably the biggest struggle really in, in the beginning was, like you said, the, the partnership and the money, I guess figuring out the financing part of it was, was a big struggle because we both wanted, we knew we wanted to work together. We didn't really know how. So we said, well, let's just keep things going. And I mean, we did it and we made it, but we, we did it completely wrong. And you can ask yeah. our CPA right now, cause he'll tell you. Oh but, man, um, he's still working on our yeah. stuff. From I still hear about it. Yeah, trust me. He's like, no, you guys, no, let's let's keep this separate. We're doing good now, so. Yeah. But uh, that, that was probably the biggest struggle is just really knowing the business side of it. Yeah. You know, we didn't know to the scale that we were gonna go to. And gotcha. so had we known that maybe we could have structured the the startup a little bit better would have made things easier going forward but um, to me that was probably the biggest struggle gotcha so, so dallas fort worth all right we've, we've had jamie on the show we've got we've had donovan on the show mm-hmm. rj's coming next month mm-hmm. yeah. how are you separating yourself from all your peers in dallas i think with our creative deal structure to be honest yeah with you. huge huge our exit strategies are um i mean it's 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 crazy it's, it's way different than um most of our guys back back home yeah i mean i love them shout out to everyone in dallas uh it's just our, our sub twos our raps or th- that's like our, our bread and butter so let's talk about that how w- explain what all those terms are oh subject <laughs> to uh so this is uh buying a property subject to uh the existing mortgage uh liens encumbrances it's pretty much you're you're just taking the property over, taking the deed, uh, leaving the loan in place, and you just take control of the property. That's mm-hmm. it. Um, mainly, this strategy works great for pre foreclosures, right? It's not the the best uh, option, but it's their best option, the, mm-hmm. the sellers, right? Because it's either you're gonna go foreclosure, bankruptcy, or you go this route where you get everything saved, right? Your foreclosure, your credit, everything's saved, and um, and everybody work it, it works out it's a win-win situation actually three ways that's why we like this route because we're able to uh, get that seller into another property or somewhere else where they can um, they can afford and then I find uh, what we do is we own our finance so we find uh, families that cannot get traditional financing to move in uh, to the property mm-hmm. so, so you guys do subject to so the person you're buying it from mm-hmm. typically this pre foreclosure Mm-hmm. They owe some money. Generally, yeah. Generally. So how much do they owe generally in your market? It's usually between 10 and 20. I mean, th- you get the crazy outrageous ones. We, we hit one. Yesterday. We hit a record <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. 141,000 on reinstatement. reinstatement. Did you guys do that 141 reinstatement? No. We're we still don't. working on it. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to figure out We're what st- to do with it. <laughs> They're trying to get final numbers. He yeah. supposedly said that um, he's working with a bank to get like a a, a reduced like payoff mm-hmm. somehow if we can get that reduced payoff we, we can do it yeah i mean yeah. the numbers are there uh it's it's the arvs are pretty high so i don't the arv is like almost uh 380 mm-hmm. so uh it's the remaining balance out. is 250. 141 so. arrears with the bank i'm yes. sorry yeah. with the bank oh, yeah there's no yeah. irs in there there's no, no, no that's just bank arrears. that's just bank wow yeah um yeah he, he mentioned he he is that uh, a balloon he, payment? <laughs> No, no. He just he said oh, he lost his job years. and he's been um, trying to find a job for five years. 
I remember that house actually. Um, I mean, we started off door knocking, right? So a lot of the houses that that come up with these high reinstatements, we door knocked them years one ago. or two years ago. Yeah, you know. So it's oh my gosh, it's not it's back new on stuff. The foreclosure list. That's yeah. crazy. And yeah, but yeah. generally, ten to twenty thousand is what we can really make work. Okay, so, so the ten to twenty thousand, you guys are coming up with that out of your own pocket. Um, kind of depends. Usually our pocket, sometimes we um, have some investors that want to put in and, and make a little bit of money. So it just kind of depends on the deal and, and uh, the specifics, I guess you could say. Yeah. Guys that want to get into the real estate game, um, but don't have like a hundred grand, 200 grand, mm-hmm. they have like 50 and below. Um, that's why we post up on Instagram, hey, you can get into this deal just for a little bit. And then we come up with a, a structure, a partnership, hey, uh, just, you know, like the, the reinstatement mm-hmm. and then some of some cost for repairs, and then uh, we end up javing on the deal on the cash flow, on the down payment, um, yeah, oh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so we're coming in with zero money. So someone that doesn't have a lot of money mm-hmm. that's looking to invest in real estate as a prime candidate as to be your lender for these deals. Exactly. And they're totally fine being a second, second position. position lean. Yeah, we explained that. Yeah. We mm-hmm. definitely explained that. Say, hey, I know you don't have the funds to play with the big boys and get in first position lean, but hey, this works for us. Yeah. And is available if you want to get some returns better than sitting in the bank. So right. Well, everything's better than sitting in the bank. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So but they get a higher return. So, I mean, it's it makes it worth it to, to be in that second position, I guess. So what kind of returns are they getting? Like, what do you guys offer on the second lien? It's a it's a JV split, so we split the cash flow. So it's not really like mm, I give I solid yeah. numbers. Yeah. yeah. So Just we'll, we'll tell them about the, the down payment, and, and we structure. Right. I I look at all. That's what um, I love sub twos and wraps because I can see um, the numbers from the remaining balance, right, and then see how much uh, cash flow will be, right, the, mm-hmm. the interest rate and everything, and then I say, okay, this project to be like five hundred dollars cash flow. Uh, we can split that, or I can. I have, I look at the deal and then I structure and I, 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 I market it, right? Hey, mm-hmm. you can get this amount of returns on this deal after I look at each deal. Okay. So you guys split the cash flow mm-hmm. um, and then, and then the, the equity pay down, mm-hmm. everything. Okay. Yeah. And then, so that's, that was one component, sub two, right? Which is a yeah. tool for pre foreclosures. Yes. And you got another tool. Um, you were saying wraps. Or was yeah, it? So, yeah. So, so the uh, sub two is the acquisition side. It's just you buy it sub two, right? You can mm-hmm. buy it cash, hard money. So we're buying it sub two. So now the exit strategies, you can rent, um, wrap, you can flip, you can Airbnb, you can live in it like both of us. We're both living yeah. in homesteads, uh, yeah, sub twos. twos. Yeah. yeah. I bought mine three weeks ago or four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. And he's so. like seven doors from my house now. Yeah. Yeah. You guys found two sub twos on the same street? Um, same different, neighborhood. Almost. Different yeah. subdivision, but couple streets away it's crazy funny you yeah. could probably throw a rock but it takes it's about five like, minutes to drive yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. fences so we're gonna knock down all the fences and yeah. we can make that like, trail yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah gotcha. it's pretty crazy and that we found them that close so gotcha yeah. um and then grant camp i forgot he's also yeah. oh yeah here. shout out shout out to grant yeah he he got us on that traction book so yeah yeah so then is there something interesting or or special about dallas that is more creative financing or it's just that you guys just happen to do it and you guys just are pushing it harder? Um, I fell in love with that when I first started real estate. Like I did a couple of wholesales, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, in the group that we're part of, the RIA, I met uh, general, uh, a gentleman named uh, Jose Hinosa, shout out. Uh, he showed me how to do a subject to rap and I just like, that was it. I yeah. mean, to get uh, get paid three times on a house mm-hmm. is like okay, I like <laughs> this one, right? It was ver- it's more intricate, it's it's more moving pieces, but I'm like after a few, it's just like no problem. It's like heroin. Yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. know that DFW <laughs> makes it like if there's anything special about the market that yeah. um, I think there's some markets that have um, some neighborhoods, you know, that make it a little bit more um, relevant, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, price okay. range, price range, yeah. and the end buyer. So much. let's talk about that. Like, what's the kind of price range you're looking at, and what kind of end buyer are you looking at? Where you say, okay, this solution makes sense in this particular market. Gotcha. I mean, so 150 price range really is is kind of and below. Yeah. Yeah. Plus or minus, you know, twenty thousand is really the the sweet spot. Actually, all the way down um, to a hundred thousand, really. Yeah. Um, but 
why is 150 and below a good sweet spot for, for this product? It keeps the mortgage payment where it needs to be for that price range of house. Once you get up over a uh, $200,000 house, mm -hmm. that mortgage payment starts climbing. You have to drop your interest rate for what people can spend. Generally, they can figure out a debt situation mm -hmm. where they can go and, and, and figure out how to get a loan. You know, below 200000 even with the higher interest rates, um, the mortgage payment um, is still in a decent price range. You mm -hmm. know, it's under two grand. And uh, usually in the 1500 range, it still makes it enough to make money um, over the underlying lien. Yeah. But it, I guess that's why it's that sweet spot. Just kind of depends. Once you get up over 200000 you have to start dropping the interest rate. Um, it doesn't work for selling a note if you ever want to do that. Um, so Yeah, is there a targeted interest rate that you guys are looking for on the, uh, on the buy side and on the sell side? Zero. On the buy side, <laughs> <Zero. laughs> as low as possible. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we try to stay under like if we can take over any mortgage that's under like five percent. Yeah. Okay. We know we can make almost uh, at least a five percent spread mm -hmm. um, on on the deal, but again, it's it's really the rental rates as well, right? Because yeah. if you're picking a house sub two and for some weird reason you can't own or finance, we can at least rent it out for the a good rental rate. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep yeah. the rental rate and the uh, the total PITI price uh, payment right at the same or, or yeah, so that's, okay. that's the Is there a targeted PITI for, for your area? Uh, 1500 and below is like really good. Like yeah. anything above is a little tougher to get um, uh, in buyer, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, there are in buyers out there. Like uh, lately, New York and Cali's moving in, right? Mm -hmm. So we're getting big, big uh, down payments from just listing on MLS, owner finance only. Oh yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we sold a couple of houses, half a million dollar house owner finance. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of down payments are you guys normally looking for on a down payment? Minimum ten percent. Yeah. Minimum, Minimum ten percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, Not more. so yeah. like fifteen, twenty k. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because around here we're always looking for like at least twenty, thirty k. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be so sweet. Yeah. If we can sit at ten percent, usually that gets us our money back. Anything that we had in on the front end, mm -hmm. um, and then it's not too much that somebody's not gonna wanna come in and put that down. Gotcha. I guess you now is that money going back to your investor or are you guys keeping that? Like what is the play there? It depends. Sometimes we- It's it, case by case. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. A lot so. of times it, it goes back. Sometimes it's a split. Just kind of depends on what we had into it with the reinstatement. A lot of times if it covers reinstatement and, and costs to acquire the property, then mm -hmm. it'll just cover that and then the cash flow. Gotcha. That, that makes so, sense. Yeah. Just kind of depends. Okay. And then uh, are there any other creative structures that you guys are using? Uh, we're actually working with the bank to get a line of credit, so we don't mm -hmm. have to buy it sub two. We can just kind of go out and pick the house and mm -hmm. then owner finance from there. So yeah, because buyers are getting uh, they're getting more they're getting smarter. Mm -hmm. They they're, they're like doing more research. They're like, hey, because they hear so many horror stories, right, about um, underlying liens, like bad investors, right, not paying the underlying lien, and the house goes to foreclosure, and then you know uh, things happen. So that's why we're looking into. Um, just buying it straight and then owner financing out so there's no underlying liens and actually your your note and your uh yeah your note's worth more pretty much so. yeah. yeah so but that takes away all the fun of sub too it does that's, yeah. that's what we had when we had no money <laughs> yeah. at the beginning yeah you know, i mean that's the yeah. best uh strategy to learn and and do when you i mean you, you, all these reinstatements are big right when you yeah, but now yeah but now you we're, we're able to um get more private uh, capital to right, but now it's partners. showing up on your guys' credit. You guys don't care about any of that. Is it business line of credit or is it? On your it's going to it's going to be a business line for the personal line. guarantee. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. so I mean that's the, the part of the fun of stuff too is like you're kind of undercover. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, one thing that because uh, we met in Dallas, yes, right, uh -huh. and after a lot of alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I remember what, what that? we ran each other in the <laughs> lobby. Yeah, I had to like, sit down because it was a long walk. Couldn't <laughs> that was a long walk. Yeah, <laughs> that was, that's a freaking stadium. Yeah, <laughs> that place was huge. Yeah, yeah. it's just a hotel. Yeah, yeah. So, but we we started talking about notes, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, and I remember I can't remember exactly what we we're talking about, but you're 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 trying to educate me on notes and how I'm missing out. You want to talk about that? It's the six figure deal. Yeah, it's six figure deal. So. Notes, yeah, that that was that's part that's wraps, right? You creating notes, um, and uh, with interest rates, thirty year notes, those pay. Um, I mean that it just, I mean it's, <laughs> I don't know. This it, is a great strategy. So, uh, real quick, uh, uh, a wholesaler brought us a deal, right? Uh, going to foreclosure, 
didn't know what to do with it, got under contract and simply hand delivered it to our office. Like, hey, I don't know what to do with this. I can't help her. There's no spread in this thing, but I just need to stop this foreclosure. And mm -hmm. we looked at it and we're like, I mean, if, if I can show you the numbers, I think everybody will run away. Everybody. For sure. It's already wrapped. This mm -hmm. was already wrapped. 10% interest already on, no, 10.38 or something. That's some, yeah, some crazy no, numbers. 10.17 if I yeah. remember right. So yeah. everybody's like, oh, hell no. This is already wrapped. How, how are you going to rewrap this? I was mm -hmm. like, well, let me play with the numbers. So that's what we did. We sat, looked at the numbers, looked at the spread. I was like, I think we can still wrap this thing. Uh, so we ended up wrapping the wrap. And after we called the original rapper yeah, <laughs> and talked to him and he was so we, good with it. Yeah. yeah. It, it just happened to be the second. Was the original rapper the one that was foreclosing on the lady? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is actually a second one that we worked on. We're like, dang, like we're getting all of his rap. So we're like, hey, we're going to call you. Hey, this is what we plan on doing on your rap. Is it cool? He's like, I don't care as long as you make me make my payments. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we did that. We got permission. We said, hey, we're going to wrap this deal. Luckily, the, the underlying lien was 68000 around 68000 Yeah. So yeah. we created a note for 100 So that right there, that spread, and then we kept 10% interest rate. Uh, after everything, we're cash flowing like 150 160 a month. 160 so a month. It's not a lot, but. That's sexy. But yeah. I'm, I'm, wait, I'm still waiting to get excited. But <laughs> it took me it took me one week to get the property, clean it out, find a buyer, wrap. And we weren't even there mm -hmm. for the whole transaction. So that was pretty cool. So we did everything like pretty much over the phone. We had a team come out and clean. We had uh, our agent come out, show the property, get a buyer and sold. Yeah. So how did you guys make money on this? We make money monthly. Really. Yeah, monthly. So, so the yeah. part to get excited about is even though um, we did zero marketing for this deal other than people knowing you know, that we can close this up to, mm -hmm. um, so zero marketing, so zero dollars in it. Um, we got all our money back that it took to reinstate. Uh, the reinstatement oh, was point. fairly low. It was, it was four thousand. Hmm. Yeah, the reinstatement was four thousand. So when we did a few minor repairs, cleaned no, up. we cleaned it. That it was, was just minor cleanup. Repair. That was we cleaned it. it. Yeah. So it was cleanup. That's so, it. So we even <laughs> made money on the, the on ten thousand dollar down payment that we yeah. got, um, and this deal will return you know, six figures to us over the course of a 30 year note. Yeah. Yeah. So and we have not heard from the end buyer. They pay Every, on time. They pay on time, sometimes early. I'm like, I mean, if we can build a system, a pro like a system that can keep creating these little cash flow machines. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's, that's what's making it sexy. We're looking at the big picture. Cause we know what's coming. Um, right. So yeah. yeah. What's coming. Things are coming. The opportunity for more sub twos. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Upcoming possible recession. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know about market correction. Not like yeah. a, a recession. Yeah. Maybe a correction on everything. But um, I mean, we're seeing it right now. So we create a, uh, a foreclosure department. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, that entails like a, a door knocker, a door knocking team. So we're um, approaching all the pre foreclosure and we, we're seeing it, the numbers are creeping up. Oh. They are creeping up. Yeah. Slowly. Exactly. Yeah, creeping up. Right? Creeping up. But now, we're because in our market, we have neighborhoods that are being built up in like six months. Like, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have those big old signs that says $500 move in special. Like, how yeah. are you? So they get down payment assistance and they right. move in for so a thousand all, bucks yeah. or Rural 500 areas, bucks. USDA. I mean, no, right? I think no. it's it's still USDA, but yeah. I mean, rule for there is not far from, it's just still in town. Yeah. yeah. And so we're seeing all these uh, people moving in, um, buying houses, right? With whatever, like their tax returns or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're true renters still, right? Um, they, they live in a house for like six months to a year, find out that, oh, taxes goes up. Oh yeah, taxes goes up, you know, and the the monthly payments increase, and all of a sudden now they can't afford the house, mm -hmm. and these are brand new houses, like the like two three years built, right? And so um, we're seeing the whole neighborhood on pre foreclosure list, and these are nice houses, mm -hmm. and so we're just picking them at like yeah. one street. We had two or three houses, like two houses on yeah, one street, one, street, one like, of those neighborhoods. Yeah, so and and slowly it's just uh, they're coming up in pre foreclosures, so. Um, we're approaching these houses and just give them our pitch, show them what we can do to get them out of the situation. Like they don't want this house anymore. So, mm -hmm. so we're picking up all these pre foreclosure houses 
for you know, almost brand new houses for like just the reinstatements. So gotcha. Yeah. So how many of these have you picked up? In a life in no, life? like in the in like in the neighborhood. It just kind of depends on the neighborhoods, but like that one, there's two on the same block. Uh, but that neighborhood was. As you're driving down the road, it's got a huge sign on the back of all the fences that says like a thousand dollar down, move mm -hmm. in, you know. I so mean, a thousand dollars down. You're basically buying houses for four thousand dollars. You guys are. Um, it kind of depends. Under ten. Yeah. yeah. Usually under, under 10. ten. Yeah. And yeah. and we see that is is like the numbers are creeping up, mm -hmm. right? In another year or two. I mean, that's why we're building what we're building in house, like a system that can handle like like ten, twenty a month, like mm -hmm. just uh, you know. So ultimately it's a recession proof for the business right for us yeah so you know we titled the show you know how to make six figures on on deals that are considered dead leads mm -hmm. and we've talked about it, we've explained it but do you want to just address that topic specifically what you mean by that I mean that last that last one was was pretty much a, a prime example and I mean yeah. just that so a six-figure deal on, on something that nobody else looks at right so um, something where you may have a, a 10, 15,000 in repairs, maybe mm -hmm. less, you know, maybe it's just 5,000, maybe you just got to go and do paint and carpet, but we can pick it up sub two. There might be a $10,000 reinstatement, you know, so you can get into that house for 10 to 20,000 ultimately. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, over the life of that loan, 30 years on a, on a property with what we're making after we sub two owner finance and wrap it or wrap and owner finance it mm -hmm. um we'll, we'll get a six-figure return over 30 years yeah over 30 um, years. and you can so, do it all day yeah so for each house just uh 100 200 300 mm -hmm. over 30 years exactly yeah, exactly yeah. Six figures. I mean, mm -hmm. doesn't take a lot of those it really does to have a very good retirement yeah no. not at all no at yeah all. yeah gotcha all right let's see what some of these uh questions we got out here um i think uh we got that tan guy has some nice hair. <laughs> Thanks. That's, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> you buy more houses. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> um, let's see. What else we got here? What type of spread do you like to see between PITI and market rent? This is from Katran. From market rents? So I mean, well, I guess from the underlying lean to what we yeah, wrap so, for. Yeah, yep, exactly. yeah, we want to have at least, we try to shoot for 300 yeah. Like, yeah, at least $300 uh, spread. I mean, of course, the more the better, but 300 is like our, we'll, we'll, we'll rather assign it when the numbers are lower, right? Mm -hmm. We'll rather assign it to like another uh, investor that wants to be a rental or, yeah. or whatnot. So. Buy a whole guy. Mm -hmm. They happen to fall in our lap and they're less than that. We, it seems to be a pretty simple deal, then we'll, we'll you know, decide if we want to do it or not. So All right. it just gotcha. kind of depends. Uh, and then his follow-up question to that was, does the 50% expense rule apply to sub twos as well? 50% expense rule. I'm not sure what the 50% expense rule is. I'm not sure either. We don't have that much expenses in these houses. Yeah. It's just, I'd uh, say it could if you wanted to, but it all depends on how you know you run the numbers, what kind of immediate return you need, and, and what you're looking at over the, the life of the deal, really. Yeah. Uh, are you guys finding buyers uh, through the MLS? Yes. Okay, so let's walk through that process. So you take it down as a sub two, you get mm -hmm. it reinstated, mm -hmm. everything's good, and you guys take it under your guys' LLC? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's not a trust? No. Correct. Because I know some people like to put them in trust. All right. Yeah. I mean, you we, have an opinion on that. Go ahead and yeah. elaborate on it. No, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, by any means, it, there, it is an extra level of security. It mm -hmm. just depends on how comfortable you are with it and, and how all your business is structured. What's the extra layer of security? Uh, with the trust, mm -hmm. it's harder to, to penetrate. You know, if the bank did want to um, call that note due, mm -hmm. um, there, there's more protection with it being in the trust and, and keeping that from actually being able to happen. Gotcha. So. All right, so then you guys take it down in your LLC mm -hmm. and then you have an agent just list it. Yeah, list it, owner finance. All right, and then on that, you're still paying the full commission mm -hmm. to both sides, going through title company, everything else is still the same. Everything's exactly. still the same. Yeah, so full commission, I mean, for an investor, <laughs> yeah. their investor go. rates, full yeah. investor commission, full yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah, definitely negotiated, but yeah, we pay commission, um, pull title, everything for for the end buyer, you know, gotcha. so it's it's a legit deal for them. How long is it taking you guys to sell? If you guys listen to MLS out there on Creative Finance, depends on the price point. 
uh, the, like the hundred thousand dollar anything under a hundred hundred fifty I mean it's just a line out the door it's, it's pretty busy mm-hmm. yeah. uh, anything above that might take like a month yeah yeah month month and a half gotcha um, and uh, Aaron Schweitzer wants to know how many of these are you taking back oh okay um, so far I don't know, maybe what, 10% of the ones? I mean, yeah, like three or four I took back. Uh, there's one house that I sold three times mm-hmm. <laughs> in like two years already. Yeah. So it's crazy. Uh, I, I, it was, uh, I just took a sub two, owner financed it out, uh, I think 125000 got a down payment, stayed there for a year. Great guy, paid on time and everything, but um, he had some, uh, his in-laws, uh, had some uh, the parents uh, were sick Mm -hmm. so he's like hey I just gotta leave town my wife already went to Denver I gotta be with my family so I don't know what to do with the house like I don't have time to sell it I just need to go right so I was like okay we'll we'll just do it Uh, deed and loot I'll just Mm -hmm. get it back and then uh, you know I gave him like 10,000 to walk walk away and he's like uh, he wasn't even expecting anything he was Mm -hmm. like dude I just take the house back so I gave him 10,000 because I knew I went to the house and he upgraded the kitchen. He did all yeah. sorts of updates. Yeah. And I'm like, man, you know? And within like two weeks, I sold it again for 145, wrapped again. Mm-hmm. Uh, stayed there for another year. Um, the It was a dad and a daughter. Dad, unfortunately, passed away. Um, and then the daughter's like, hey, I was just staying here to watch my dad. I work on other side of town, so can you just take this house back? I want to move to the other side of town. I was like, sure. So I took back the house again a year later, well, and then put it back on the market, but this time I just went ahead and sold, sold it. it. Yeah, for 155 So every year I went up on the price, got a down payment, got the cash flow, and then I sold it finally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was, that was one of the most, like, craziest, uh, I mean, it's, it's one of those dream come true for an investor, right? Because right. that's what you want, right? Like, not want, but like, you don't wish that on anybody, but things happen where you get the house back mm-hmm. and yeah. then you can restart the loan, restart right. the loan. So, as long as you got a good process on it, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people look at that situation and they get scared of it. Um, but as long as you know what your process is, if that does happen, you know, if somebody's late, um, you know, get the letter out, um, making sure that they know that there's action, you know, you're paying attention. So you're filing um, foreclosure notices? 20 days, letter of intent, all yeah, that. Yeah, letter of intent, everything. 20 there. days. So in Texas, they move real fast. They move real, real fast. fast. Yeah. So what is the foreclosure process in Texas? If, if somebody doesn't pay us on a sub two, we can we can have the foreclosure going in, in under two months. Yeah. So Man, it's crazy. Because um, like, oh, out here, it's like three months it's a while, huh? before they file the notice. Oh, yeah. And then it's three months before they came foreclose. So that's still fast compared to like Florida or Massachusetts. Yeah. That's why we oh, get yeah. in Texas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why it works well it makes a lot for of us. Sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, let's see. Are you, Jason Deli wants to know, are you doing second position liens or is the company funding initial investment? What's up, Jason? Um, <laughs> What's up, Jason? So uh, what was the question again? Are you guys doing second lien or is the company funding the initial investment? Uh, the company funds the initial investment. Okay, and then sometimes the down payment doesn't cover upfront costs. So if you're finding second lien positions, how long are you or your lenders comfortable being cash negative? Uh, if our down payment doesn't cover, we generally don't do the deal on a sub yeah. two. Mm. Like you uh, won't, you we should accept an offer. Well, we shouldn't be, be into, into the into deal, deal for that much. If the reinstatement and repairs um, can't be covered by a 10% down payment on the sale, mm-hmm. um, we, we generally don't look at it all the time as a sub two owner finance, maybe a sub two flip if that's a possibility, maybe a buy and hold, something like that. But yeah. um, if, if we can't get our costs covered from our deposit on the back end with the owner finance, generally we won't do that. Yeah, gotcha. So. And then uh, earlier before we started the show, you guys had some targets you guys were looking for as far as what percentage you wholesale, what percentage you mm-hmm. flip. Can you talk okay. about that? Yeah, so this quarter we're at uh, 60% wholesale. 30% flips and 10% owner finance and uh, buy and holds. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're at this okay. quarter. So this is the marketing you guys are doing and you guys are sending out your guys or you guys doing everything over the phone? It's mostly over the phone. Okay, so you guys are doing your, your conversations over the phone yeah. mm-hmm. and based off that you can say, okay, this is a wholesale transaction. Mm-hmm. We're just gonna buy below market. And then another part, three out of 10, you guys are flipping. Who's mm-hmm. running, who's managing that? We have an in-house project manager. 
Okay. So we kind of set everything up in the beginning. We know what our budget is. We go over a quick scope, and um, then we meet on a weekly basis after that. Okay, so you have one person in charge of all your flips. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I need one of those. Yeah. And it's, then, it's a very good <laughs> <laughs> process. Yeah. 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 So. And yeah. then you got one out of ten you guys are going to keep yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys don't take turns, don't dibs. You guys just own them. All your LCs are on title on all of them. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a whole different company that, that right. ends up but, buying. But, yeah, so we, we just keep them in there. It's just a different structure. Um, it's a partnership. It's owned um, okay. not by our company, so it's owned by – well, I mean, we can get into it personally, but it's just a different structure. So the way that the, the businesses are set up, it's easier for us to, if we wanted to pull one out and, mm -hmm. and do that route later on, we can yeah. always do that. Gotcha. So. And I did have one question. Um, I was looking you guys up and it was, you know, go to your website, Odd Brothers, mm -hmm. but it sounded like there was a third brother. Yeah. There was, was. the third, there was, yeah, past there was. tense. Yes. Yeah, there was. Okay. So, like I said um, at the beginning, when we um, all got together, it was, it was three guys. Uh, it's just business evolved, and just the the roles, right? We 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 were all hustling, we were all doing deals, and it just you know we we're just spinning our wheels. Like we can all do this separately, or yeah. let's do it all together, and and really designate the roles, and and so it's just. Um, it was business evolution more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. It just worked out better. Different this way exit for strategies, different uh, and ideas goals. Yeah, and goals. But yeah. I mean, we're, we're still good. I we literally just text today. Like we're yeah. still yeah. still good. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, because two partners, two people are already difficult enough to handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a third one. Yeah. Three so ways. that's yeah. So that's truly how we got our names because uh, he was Hispanic. This guy's <laughs> white. Um, not. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <it's> not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, it was good, and that was uh, part of our early struggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, getting going. But like I said, once we kind of figured that out, and, and then we we got our feet on the ground, and got running. So yeah, gotcha. Um, and guys, you know, this is a live show, so don't be afraid to ask questions. So ask questions. Uh, Teresa wants to know: Are you buying a trust with LLC being the beneficiary? I think you guys are bu buying everything LLC, is right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we set everything up, and um, we have holding companies in um, Wyoming mostly, but you can go Nevada, Wyoming, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, wherever, um, and then those holding companies on the individual companies that we purchase in. Gotcha. So just different structures. Uh, that's how we get our layer of protection um, as opposed to going through trust. Gotcha. And what does your organization look like today? Today, uh, two CEOs, I guess, uh, one CFO, one admin, one transaction coordinator, two senior acquisitions, three junior acquisitions. And now foreclosure department is one foreclosure specialist, one field inspector, and one bandit sign putter outer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you guys aren't going to houses anymore? No, we haven't. We haven't been to houses. I mean, we we go when we need to, but um, it's been a while since we go oh, to. We'll go do a final walkthrough. Project yeah. manager was yeah, the project sorry. manager. I mean, everything from what I can tell is you guys go get fun, and then we do like fun. Man, when you <laughs> ask us, our our daily struggle these days is finding which fun restaurants to eat at. That that's our daily uh, struggle right now. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you look good. I can't eat. I can't eat. It. I can't eat the noodles. Right. I have to get everything without the noodles. So. Oh man. Oh, man. So yeah, it's sad. His body does not do well with carbs, so. Well, we did get up and run this morning, yeah. so we had to do yeah. that, so we could. Where are you guys running? <laughs> uh, just at the the hotel. At the hotel. Yeah. All right, we're running at five thirty. You want to if you want to talk to Pace, we run at five yes. thirty. Five thirty in the morning. Okay. After. All right. I don't know about tonight. <laughs> I mean, this morning was the only morning I, we think we were gonna be up that early. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We got Saying, long If you want to talk about sub two. Yeah. Maybe. How many miles? Four miles. Four miles. Okay. I'll, I'll do it for you. Thank Don't you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just FaceTime me, I guess. <laughs> all right. So you guys have all these all these bodies. They're all in-house. Any virtual assistants? Three. Yes. Three okay, what do they assistants. do? They're handling our um, our SMS. We, we were doing SMS and RVM returns, mm -hmm. but now they're just handling our SMS returns. So we have a system where we're... It's double filtered, mm -hmm. I guess, through each of them. What does that mean? Uh, so as our texts go out, they come back in. Um, both of them are, are responding. 
uh, to those to keep up with them because we we do a, a good enough volume it it takes one or two of them to keep up mm -hmm. and then um from there they actually do the outbound calls so we get all the information from them um, about selling or not all but a basic amount of information from the the seller um, with enough info to call them back mm -hmm. and if they answer um, we get a little bit more information and at that point it goes into our crm gotcha. um, so for, the VA, for our acquisition team yeah, to so, pick up so the va is uh, filling out a web form it shoots over to uh, our team and then they'll take it from there yeah gotcha so. is sms your your favorite marketing technique it's one of our best right now um, okay it's it's easy and it's simple so yeah i mean get the data shoot it out and i mean the system it's taken a lot of tweaking tang's worked with the the vas to get the the right stuff mm -hmm. um you know the right replies going yeah. back and forth and and then yeah. i just kind of handle making sure everything keeps going out so i think it's for for our return on it um i'd say it's definitely one of our favorite for sure all right and what else is working for you guys bandit, bandit signs. signs really <laughs> that's yeah. how we got started honestly that's that's how i started and it's it's great in dallas i mean People start, people hear, oh, you do it? Okay, cool. They'll get 100, they'll go put it out, and it doesn't work for them, right? Because mm -hmm. it's 100. Um, but stay consistent yeah. and know the honey holes, know how to put out signs, position. It's it's like, it's it's not just throwing out signs. It's an art. Yeah. It's an art, exactly, yeah. yeah. We like, challenged our sales <laughs> team this last weekend. and Oh, yeah, that was fun. I yeah. don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but we won. Yeah. <laughs> we got more yeah. leads than they did. So and we put uh, a third of the signs out. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did personally. Our, our yeah. Us too, yeah. yeah. Literally us too. We went out like three in the morning and oh, really, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's a great way to lead. So. Um, Temperance wants to know what's the source you guys recommend to learning for someone that wants to learn sub two. Honestly, uh, Creative Cash Flow with uh, Grant Kemp. Yeah. He has an awesome uh, program that you can sign up and and, and real good system. Yeah, yeah. real good Absolutely. system. Um, yeah. Brian Oregu just jumped on. He's another guy. That's why I was asking, like, you know, it seems to be very popular in certain parts of the country. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of the reasons people I was thinking about. What's up, Brian? Um, all right. So we got to uh, wrap up. So, guys, you guys have any other last questions, you know, uh, throw them out there. Uh, so you guys are in Dallas, Fort Worth. Correct. Exclusively. <laughs> you guys aren't going in any other markets. Not right now. We wanted to really um, – make sure that we had our marketing honed in we knew what worked and didn't work um, and then we're going to start expanding for sure gotcha. it's in the plans we just want to make sure we're doing it uh, the yeah. correct way that's smart yeah. and there's so much in our backyard there's so there much is. in the i know yeah. i was so. looking at it I, I i thought phoenix was big and they were and then we were looking at houston it's like wow houston's really big yeah. and you look at dallas like man dallas yeah. is even yeah it's <laughs> yeah, huge it's so much crazy so, yeah we're, we're and good. it's growing so fast too yeah. every day so yeah well, what we're looking at in the future with the, the sub twos and the wraps and and how the market is i think that's has to be local mm -hmm. that has to have some sort of a belly to belly mm -hmm. um action with the, the sellers because you're, they're literally just leaving their mortgage in place right, right. and so that's what so we're building that. trust you yeah so that team that we're building we're planning on getting at least like 10 more acquisitions in that team to just go out by next year. So that's our goal. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so right now, as far as marketing, how much are you guys spending on marketing? Depends on the month, um, you know, how much data we have to buy or don't buy, you know, but it's it's probably usually somewhere around 25,000. Okay. Um, you know, we have no problem spending more. I'd actually like to spend more. So it just, just kind of as you know, as things flow in, we'll we'll spend more as we grow. So. Yeah, our problems, our challenges with SMS is where is there more to spend? Because we've eaten up all yeah. the da Dallas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dallas is huge, so yeah. maybe you guys don't have that problem. Yeah, we actually bought every house in Maricopa County. Really, in the Phoenix metro area. Oh wow! So you can just run out of people to text, right? You could text yeah. a lot of people. Well, you just buy it again oh, and yeah. start <laughs> over until yeah. they tell you. I mean, the replies are funny. You text me three times ago with three different numbers, <laughs> same you know, like, same exact message. Yeah, but yeah, are you ready to sell? But <laughs> people's lives change. You know, you might text Never somebody know. two months ago and had yeah. absolutely no intention to sell, and, and now they got a job offer somewhere else, and they're highly motivated, and their house isn't fixed up, and now they need to sell at a discount. So Exactly. You never know. Uh, so visionary integrator mm -hmm. like what are some of the key roles that you have or key responsibilities that you have or some key responsibilities you have key responsibilities mine's mainly marketing 
Um, Instagram. I'm shooting so yeah. many. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, shooting so many ideas. Like every day, I'm like just uh, so our office in one room, right? Mm -hmm. And we're always bouncing ideas. I'm always throwing ideas, and he's always trashing it or like, oh, yeah. I'll think Shoot about it, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. The hell? I regulate. Thinking? I regulate. Yeah, he regulate my my <laughs> ideas, and so that's been awesome because. I mean, when you're visionary, things just pop up. You never know. And mm -hmm. you're like, and I'll stop everything I'm doing. And he's like so focused on building something. I just screw up his whole day. <laughs> yeah. But the idea needs to come out because yeah. it's like if I don't put it out, I, I'm going to forget it. Or, mm -hmm. And that's a, quite a few good ideas, you know, sometimes. Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, definitely with Tang, it's it's managing the, the acquisition team, knowing the deals, structuring those deals, um, anything on the visionary role, you know, the big ideas, things like that. Uh, for me, it's, it's kind of more, like we said, you know, managing those big ideas and saying mm -hmm. like, okay, no, maybe we need to wait here. Let's, let's focus on what we have going, uh, yeah. get this done, then we can jump into that. Um, I work with our CFO on the finances. Uh, that's kind of a new role. So we're hopefully getting into that where I can step out a little bit less. Um, so now i got two bosses. I have him <laughs> and the CFO. Every time I throw a, hey, I'm going to try this marketing. She's like, no, there's no money right now. <laughs> like, all right, all right, all right. She's like, you're not allowed to spend anymore. All right, so, all right, but it's funny. No, it's it's good, though. It's, it's a real good thing. So. But I love that you call it a regulator because I think that's such a great yeah. describe, description, right? Yeah. As, yeah. At, at, Especially as a visionary, it's like, just let me do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I want to do this. It's yeah. going to work. I know it. I know it. Yeah. It's like, I'm sure it will, but it's going to take away from these things that we're, we're working on now. I know. So that's what that's that's the response, and it's always true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, yeah. just yeah. a balance. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. All right. So I'm going to let you guys think about, uh, you know, a quick th or uh, something that you guys want to say, you know, a message from you, a message from you, while I make a couple of quick announcements. Okay. okay. And then we'll go back to that. So, guys, um, I'm finishing the year in New Orleans with Chris Rude in December 6th through 8th for 2019 Skillathon. If you guys want to check that out, it's bit.ly slash 2019 skill. Again, it's bit.ly 2019 skill. That's the Skillathon in New Orleans. And then uh, Max Menes and I, we are still putting up our workshop. Uh, we've been getting uh, lots of uh, inquiries about our workshop where we go over everything in our business. So if you want to make 2020 your year, uh, visit disruptors.com to see if the workshop will make sense for you. It's D-I-S-R-U-P-T-O-R-S dot com. And next week, we've got Kyle Wildoge, another Phoenix player, uh, talking about his business and how door knockings worked really well for him. So Ooh, definitely tune in next week. And so last thoughts, start with you. Fail fast, fail often, and fail forward. That's... As a visionary, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> crash a lot. Yeah, yeah, crash a lot, but you know, um, learn a lot and and just do it soon, so you can spend the rest of you know your years doing more. Yeah, yeah. I have a better life for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, since you took mine, I'll uh, no, no, no. I mean, it's along those lines, really. I mean, for me, you know, just if somebody's looking to get into the business, um, don't overanalyze. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier, you know. Maybe we should have structured better going into it, um, but it's not ending us. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, I don't mean ending us. I guess it's it's not hurting us moving forward today. Um, I think it helped us in the long run just getting in and getting started, and now we can go back and figure those things out. So I guess what I really want to say is just if it's something that you want to get into, then don't overanalyze, don't wait, you know, take some action because once you get started, then... Uh, the rest kind of comes. So. All right, it's a Nike slogan, slogan, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. All right, so if someone wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Um, so they can reach me <laughs> on my new Instagram name. What is it? The Eric The Kane. Eric Kane. I changed that for Tang. Um, <laughs> yes. Or you can reach me in my email. It's eric at fweinvest.com. So uh, that's probably the easiest way, email. Man, emails just – I don't even get emails anymore. What? No. I mean, someone reads it. Is that me? Oh, well, okay. yeah. <laughs> like, if you email me, it's a freaking black hole. Okay, um, we tango dot with dot me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, eating pho and drinking ginger shots. And having and Tito's. And, and pictures of his beautiful family. Yes. Yeah. Love you guys. Uh, that and, uh, yeah, Facebook. I'm on Facebook, too, so. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thank Facebook's you W-Y-N-N. It's confusing. Yeah, W-Y-N-N. Sorry. <laughs> Incognito. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys.